Lan is here. So, does she save flame? Let's do our typical analysis, consisting of a kid's deep dive, advancement and matrix analysis, and finally, rotation, team comps, and comparisons. When hitting enemies with any basic or dodge attack, you generate parasols near the target hit. You can generate up to 3, lasting 20 seconds each, with a 1.5 second cooldown between generating new parasols. When an enemy is standing near at least one parasol, they will receive more flame and charge attack damage and take two dot effects. One is a static 4 second burn, and another is tick based on consuming feathers, which are gained passively when doing damage and over time. When using Lan's aerial hot attack, you can cause parasols to spin. When spinning, they will consume extra feathers per second and do damage according to the multiplier. This multiplier, known as polyfeather parasol, is simply 1 plus the amount of parasols you have out. So this is just 4 in most cases. When the feathers run out, the damage is still applied but at the minimum amount. Don't ever use this aerial hold attack for DPS though, it's not very good. Similar to the dodge effect, it doesn't matter how many parasols the enemies are standing next to for this passive damage, they only need to be close to just one, as the damage for multiple do not stack. Lamb's skill will make her dash through all of the parasols, which is also an iframe. Each parasol you pass through will deal damage and then trigger fiery crash, an explosion for even more damage, and then start spinning each parasol. You'll also gain damage reduction and hyperbody for 8 seconds after dashing. Lance Discharge deals a high amount of damage and increases your flame damage by a set amount, multiplied by Polyfeather Parasol for 20 seconds. As such, Lan is a fairly straightforward character for DPS. Use your skill off cooldown to get your parasol spinning for extra damage, and then time your charge such that you can discharge to Lan for the bonus damage buff. When using Lan on field, you have two options for DPS, basic attacks or aerial attacks. They're fairly close in terms of DPS, but the aerial attack chain is faster and does around 10% more DPS and also has the added benefit of not being subject to the red tether that many other aerial attacks have at range. Lamb's auto attack hold is a useful gap closer, as it dashes quite far and fast. Heck, it's faster than normal sprinting. What about her tanking capabilities? When using Fortitude Resonance, any weapon skill you use will taunt enemies for 2.5 seconds. Additionally, when using her skill, a large AoE is created, giving teammates 20% damage reduction. This effect can be extended by using the Area Hold skill. In practice, however, Lan holds aggro much better than you think for a 2.5 second taunt. Even with negligible damage and only camping Lan, I can hold aggro and provide constant damage reduction for teammates, then use her convenient iframe skill to get myself out of danger when needed. Even as a standalone tank, she really does her job quite well. Lan's trait reduces flame and frost damage taken by you and your allies inside the AoE barrier, while increasing final damage. It's a decent support trait that gives an extra offensive edge to land support capability. That's about it for her kit. Next, let's look into her advancements. We'll examine Lan's advancements in three different teams. One with Lin, Lan, and Annabella. Lin, Lan, and Ruby. And then Triple Fire, Ruby, Lan, Annabella. Her A1 transfers 30% of the damage from Fiery Crash as well as detonations from the target to three units near it, including the target itself. 
This also multiplies the ammo usage of other weapons by Polyfeather Parasol, which is a fancy way of saying it makes Annabella shoot out 4 bullets at once, doing the damage, charge, and shatter of all 4 bullets worth. This advancement has considerable value in teams with Annabella, but not so much otherwise. Her A3 makes all the parasols explode for 30% of fiery crashes damage when using any discharge or shattering a target shield. It also comes with additional utility of reducing the attack of enemies near parasols by 15% and instantly spawns 3 parasols when entering combat and dealing damage. This advancement isn't worth too much damage, as it's worth more for the utility. Her A5 makes Fiery Crash and Transfer Damage ignore a large amount of the target's flame resistance, and also increases the flame damage debuff from the Parasol slightly. Again, like with the previous advancements, Fiery Crash isn't too big of a portion of her total damage output, so the value of this isn't that high even if resistance isn't high. Finally, her A6 grants a huge multiplier on her auto attack damage, making her a much more competitive main DPS. Additionally, all the Polyfeather Parasol multipliers, aside from the bullet consumption, increase from 4 to 6, increasing buffs and damage by a considerable amount. Next, let's take a look at her matrices and compare them to other options. Lan's Two-Phase Matrix increases flame attack and flame damage when you equip at least one flame weapon, working in the offhand. Her Four-Phase Set grants a certain elemental damage percent per elemental weapon equipped, and a larger amount of final damage for each altered weapon. This also works in the offhand. How strong are these compared to alternate options in flame? First, let's take a look at limited matrices. Lan's matrix is one of the strongest options, about on par with Lin's matrix. Ruby and Annabella matrices are similar to each other, but Anna is highly recommended over Ruby for usability purposes, as Ruby's matrix can be awkward to time and stack up. When compared to standard matrices, generic damage matrices are fairly lackluster due to the damage split in this team, but could be slightly better in an Annabella main DPS team. The new Havo and Scylla matrices are much better, reaching almost 75% of the power of the limited matrices. I definitely recommend farming for them. Claudia matrices here have a very high ceiling, but do note that in order to reach this ceiling, you'll need a 6 lin, and you need to hit every cooldown reset and not waste any cooldown time on Annabella. Finally, Cobalt matrices, when placed on Annabella, can be slightly better than standard DPS matrices. Next, let's look at rotations and team comps. In a LAN team with Annabella, there are two distinct playstyles, one with LAN as main DPS, and one with Annabella as main DPS. While LAN does significantly more DPS than Annabella, even before 6 star, main DPSing on Annabella has one huge benefit. That is, that you can use Annabella's trait for a huge 30% on-field increase, which benefits all the passive damage from Lin and Lan, bridging the gap of main DPS potential. However, when running Annabella main DPS, it's recommended to have Annabella's matrices, or else you won't have enough dodges to fill downtime. Her bulletless dodges are still almost double the damage of her basic attacks or other combos. Because the core of this rotation is very simple, that is, use Annabella bullets off cooldown, then do autos on land before switching to the third weapon and using the skill if applicable. You can substitute other weapons for Lin and use the same rotation essentially. Let's first look at a rotation with Lan as main DPS. 
open up with Lin's Moonlight Realm, followed by an auto attack on Lan to spawn her parasols, then use her skill. Switch to Annabella and dodge three times. Yes, three. To compensate for lag and spaghetti code, three dodges, or even four, would be safe to ensure that all bullets get used. Discharge back into Lan and use auto attacks as well as her skill for up to around 8 seconds, where you then swap into Lin, use another Moonlight Round, then switch to Annabella to use her bullets again. Repeat this from the land Discharge. The rotation is very similar with Annabella as a main DPS. Just dodge on her 6 times per rotation instead of 3 to 4, and of course, use Annabella's trait over Samir or Fenrir's. So, how do these different comps compare? Let's take a look in the next section. Disclaimer! Remember to take theory crafting with a grain of salt because it's just that. Theory. It's not perfect, but it gives us a good idea of where things stand. In terms of flame teams, the strongest is the Lin, Land, Annabella comp. Theoretically, Lan Lin Ruby isn't too far behind, but in practice, Ruby is much less consistent because of her cube bouncing off to Africa, especially when you go in for Lan dashes. She can work as a copium support, but it's not ideal. Triple Fire is also a bit scuffed because you have to give up Lan uptime to stack heat for Ruby, who, at the end of the day, provides less worthwhile buffs and damage compared to Lin at a greater uptime cost. Whether you do a land main DPS build with Fenrir trait or an Annabella semi main DPS build with Annabella trait, the theoretical damage percent is similar. But to keep things consistent with the other builds that use a perfect 20% Samir trait, we'll just use that for this comparison. Lan pulls flame out of the dumpster and offers more potential damage than Fenrir comps. Along with Annabella, she offers a significant amount of resistance shred, allowing her to do big damage in endgame content. However, in typical situations where mobs move constantly, you can miss a good portion of your fiery crash and skill damage when mobs aren't standing between your parasols. Man's cactus damage is high, but in practical situations, she might still pale in comparison to Fenrir, who also benefits extremely in content with resist, as the clone has 0% resistance. For dolphin comps, excluding the new world boss matrices, the damage potential of a land team is close to that of Fenrir team. That is, that flame is relatively a bit weaker when not at max investment. In FTD comps, with A1 and non-limited 0-star matrices only. Lan puts Flame in a very decent place, barring the anomaly that is the Fensaki team. Technically, you don't even need A1 Annabella for this, as it literally provides nothing for Lan. This makes Flame one of the most FTV friendly teams to play. Lan is a powerhouse for Flame, she provides a huge amount of passive damage, even more than an A6 Lin at A0, while also providing debuffs and buffs for Flame. She has some awkward forced synergy with Annabella, but that isn't to say that Annabella is mandatory to play Flame. Ruby is still a suitable sub DPS if you already have her invested in. So, did she save Flame in the way that people expected? While that's a bit unsure, at least she's super cute. See you guys next time!